Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you're out here. It's good to see everyone. We're going we're gonna to start here in a moment. Um, but before that, let me know if there's, any, if there's anyone new. The bathrooms are uh, here for the men's bathroom, over there for the women's bathroom. Um, I see a lot of you in your cars tonight. The parking is, well, I, I don't have a car, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, we're going to start off with some worship. We're going to go into uh, small groups after. And uh, we're going to end the night with prayer and uh, some food downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. I, I have a little testimony. I don't know if you, any of you guys have been praying for a while for anything you've been wondering, but uh, I have. I was praying uh, about the direction of my life. As some of you know, I'm in the media team uh, Sundays, and um, I've been doing that a lot, and I've been learning a lot about it. And I took biochem in school, but I've been wondering if I should take a year off or so to delve into computers. So I've been praying about that, and... Um, this Saturday, yesterday, um, I was in a car. Well, I, I got Ubered back from an emergency uh, emergency tech call <laughs> in the morning. I had 12 minutes to prepare to get there. <laughs> and um, the, the Uber driver asked me for my card for, for his laptops, like to repair laptops. And I was like, that's great. You know, like it's pretty much the answer to my prayers. Right before I, I went in the Uber, uh, the, the person who asked for help said, you know, God's going to bless you. And uh, that was an answer to my prayers. So just know that God hears you. I, I've, I've been praying for like a month, so I was glad. I was, I was very happy about that. Amen. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's open up in prayer. You want to you wanna open up? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you, Sami. God definitely hears. Why don't we stand, uh, stand to our feet tonight? And just prepare to receive, yeah, to receive the Lord. Um, I was reminded of the first service that we had in April, March, I think. Uh, the first service that we had in March, and I had intended to begin the, the series that we're doing now on repentance back in March, but the Saturday before our Sunday service, I was hanging out with some cool ladies um, and just sharing my testimony and they were sharing theirs. And on my drive home, the spirit was like, share this testimony tomorrow instead of, um, instead of the, the message that you had prepared. And as you guys recall, uh, that first service, I shared my testimony of getting called um, into ministry and of the vast wilderness in northeastern Kenya. Um, and, and the night before that service, as I was preparing to share my testimony, I sensed so strongly that Jesus was going to come to, like he was going to walk down Bronson Avenue and knock on the door um, here at Peace Tower Church during our service, um, and that he was going to come inside and be with us. Um, that passage of, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know, if any will let me in, I will come in and I will eat with him. And that was the, the clear, like I knew, I knew for sure that we were going to physically like hear Jesus knock on the door and see him come in and, in a supernatural way in the physical realm. Uh, and I just felt that so powerfully and so strongly. So our service happened and, and one of the young adults at the end, when we were talking about it, um, he mentioned how Jesus was in the room. Um, that there was just such unity and such love and such togetherness uh, in that first service that it was as if Jesus knocked on the door, came into the room, was with us and ate with us um, and in doing so just brought us together in, in a supernatural way. And so I was reminded of that uh, this week and, and I just want us to, to, when I look back on the services that we've had and just this past season of ministry and I'm sure perhaps when each of you look back on, on your lives over the, over the past couple of months, um, I'm just so overcome with gratitude for Jesus, you know, that he came um, to be with us in this space um, when we started this off and that he has been 
present in every every gathering that we have had um, that he has come in and eaten with us um, walked and moved among us and, and drawn us together in a way that no one else and nothing else could um, and so today as we go through these songs this these songs are just born out of gratitude for, for Christ his presence for what his cross has won for us um, so I encourage you guys to just like celebrate and and take deep gratitude um, and thanksgiving and rest in in the in the work of Jesus in the cross and in his presence um, and so even before we begin singing like yeah Yeshua has been with us and is with us even now um, and he's the reason why he's the reason why this is happening as it's happening so just take a few moments to you know, like connect with Christ, to say hi to him, maybe you haven't in a while, to embrace um, the gift of his presence and to just like have your mind blown by the fact that he would come here to be with us together, you know? What a gift, what a privilege. And to even desire to see him, to hear him knock on these doors, to see him come into this room. Um, Acts tells us that the Lord will send our Messiah to us again. And times of refreshment will come from that. And so, yeah, let's just think of Jesus, welcome him, thank him for being present, being Emmanuel, God with us, and expect, anticipate that as he comes into this room, as he comes into each of our hearts, everything will change. reminded of um, Colossians chapter 1 and I just want to read that over us as we welcome the Son of God. Colossians 1.15, the Son is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him 
all things hold together in him we hold together Christ is the head of the body he's the beginning the firstborn from among the dead so that in all things he may have preeminence for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ Jesus and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross the visible image of the invisible God our firstborn this is Jesus so just take a few more moments before we get into praise uh, to just praise the Lord to rest in Christ you were made for him you were created through him the most intimate thing to you is the Son of God the firstborn from among the dead which means we too will rise from the dead like the one who is our firstborn Jesus we love you tonight thank you thank you thank you for coming for knocking on the doors of our hearts for knocking on the door of this space in the spirit realm for granting us your presence granting us an audience with you you are welcome here you've already changed the atmosphere and we're so grateful as we praise you as we adore you as we lay everything before you may you be magnified and exalted and may you be supreme over all things the name Jesus over all things in this room may you reign may you deliver may you comfort may you empower we love you and all this is for you in Jesus name amen amen amen
John. John chapter 11 is the account where um, Jesus raises Lazarus out from the grave. Where Jesus says to Lazarus, get up out of that grave. It's a paraphrase. So this is what we find in John chapter 11 because I just want us to take a few minutes um, calling things out from the dead, calling things out from the grave. So Martha, the, the sister of Lazarus, after his death, Martha says to Jesus in John 11:21, 21, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And in verse 23, Jesus says to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha replies, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. It's not the last day. It's not a future moment. Jesus in the flesh said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And Jesus asks Martha, do you believe this? And that is Christ's question to you and I tonight. Do you believe this? That I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. And Martha answered, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, that you are the Son of God who has come into the world. And a little bit after this conversation, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth from the grave. And the man who had been dead came out with his hands and feet bound in strips of linen and his face wrapped in cloth and Jesus said unwrap him and let him go John chapter 11 unwrap him and let him go I just want us to sing this get up from the grave get up out of the grave again and again and if there's a space in you that is dead sing this out to that part of you because Christ is here and he is the resurrection. He is the life. He is the one whose voice calls out to all that is dead from the grave. So sing this for yourself. If there is somebody that you know that the Spirit brings to your mind that is outside of the kingdom of God in the place of the dead, as we sing this phrase, let the Spirit use you and your voice to call them out from the dead. The resurrection is here. The life is here. I believe the things that people are coming to life in this moment. So let us put our faith, our expectation, our need for this Jesus as we declare these words. Mm, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up. 
from now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul and this wayward son has found his way Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come, in all my weaknesses, you are my confidence, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come.
let's just take a couple more minutes to pour out our gratitude for the Lord. When we think of the, how immense and vast the love of Jesus is, he is worthy of five, 10, 20, 30 minutes, everlasting time spent just appreciating him. So just for the next couple of minutes, pour out whatever is in you to just say thank you for this love is so immense and the sacrifice was so perfect that he is deserving and he is worthy. Thank you. 
semangat. Dear Jesus, receive this that is for you. Each person here, O oh Lord, created through you, created for you. And in this moment, receive these songs of praise. Receive these postures of adoration. It's all for you. It is all for you. You are so obedient and so humble, humbling yourself even to death for each one of us. And now you are seated at the right hand of the Father, in the place of honor and authority. Now you are interceding for us. Now you are glorified and magnified. And we long to see you, Jesus. For scripture tells us that when we see you, we will be like you. Approved of the Father. Victorious over this world blameless in every way your brothers and your sisters until then O oh Christ receive our worship receive our adoration may each person in this room ever praise and adore you and cling to you and hold you as the preeminent lots of help um, Pastor Anne is away uh, today and also our next service and I'm just grateful for people like Tinashe that give their time and that show up and, and um, fill in in such a wonderful way and Arlene and Amanda helping her along. So we're very much looking forward to food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the sisters, you know, where would we be without the sisters themselves? The sisters Doucette. Is it Doucette? Julie and Kelly, thank you guys um, for serving. You seem to get along really well. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if I was leading with my sisters, they'd be like, no, 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 we're not doing that song. No, it doesn't start that way. No, like it would just be, the Holy Spirit would be like, gosh, let's move on. Um, yeah, oh, and Wes, of course, you were here too, and you're not a Doucette sister. <laughs> thank you for cojoning. Thank you so much. Where would we be without the box drum? Um, yeah, so thank you. And then a bunch of you are here early, um, like Isaac, setting up um, all these chairs you're sitting on, you know, Isaac, and, and the fans. We would all be dying if not for Isaac's efforts. Um, and I must say, as Judah reminded me, I take full responsibility for the weather because I complained about it two weeks ago that you guys had lied about summertime. <laughs> So I'm glad to have found that you guys were not lying. You told me the truth. <laughs> Ottawa summers are marvelous in every way. <laughs> and I bless the Lord for today and how hot it is. I'm so very grateful. Um, yeah, so thank you guys, volunteers. Thank you for coming and being awesome. Um, and again, just so you guys know, the, the doors are now locked. So if you step out, just text someone. And eventually, they'll check their phone. And eventually, they'll open the door. <laughs> But don't leave, just sit by the door after you've sent the text and, and uh, we'll, see. we'll see about letting you in. Um, okay, so we're going to go into small groups uh, tonight. For those of you that weren't here um, two weeks ago, um, we're going through a summer series uh, with two services each month. The first service is a message that I share um, and the second service we get into small groups and discuss. This is a little... My S's are very intense. Um, but the second service, we get into small groups and discuss um, uh, the contents of, of the message. So that's what we're going to do tonight. If you are here and you recall the message and you've thought about those questions, definitely looking forward to hearing your thoughts, your perspectives, your revelations from going through the passage in Ezekiel. 
If you were not here, uh, definitely take in the discussion around you. Um, feel free to, to listen. Um, if it, if it st strikes up anything inside of you, a question, um, a thought, then you definitely have the freedom and the opportunity to share. Um, if you're just soaking it in, no pressure at all, feel free to do so. Um, but we definitely welcome you to engage as much as you can um, and to bring your own uh, walk with God and your own understanding of the passages that you'll read in your groups um, to the group. Um, so definitely just looking forward to uh, a wonderful evening. So what's ahead of us is we'll split into the small groups from last time and place those of you that are new into specific groups and you'll be there with your group facilitator until the end of the night, after which you guys can head downstairs and eat to your heart's content. Um, yeah, you know. Okay, so, so just a, a brief refresher on the message from last week um, and on the three questions that we're moving from. Our series is repentance. Our passage comes out of Ezekiel and Ezekiel's call in the first few chapters of the book of Ezekiel. Um, and we are going to talk about Ezekiel chapter 3. Uh, hopefully you guys had a chance to read it uh, and think about who you are in that text um, and what the words of that text are saying to you. Um, and then the second question is this idea of being hard-headed or hard-hearted, which you'll see in the text, uh, God accuses the, the nation of Israel, the house of Israel, of being hard, um, being stubborn and being hard-hearted towards him. Um, in other words, unresponsive to his voice, unresponsive to his messages. And so we're going to internalize that and, and think about and share about ways or seasons when each of us have been hard-hearted, unresponsive, stubborn um, to the Lord and to his voice. And just talk about why, wh what has brought that about. Um, maybe you're in, in such a season right now. Um, and then the final question is repentance. Um, which I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, have some experience with repentance. Uh, so we'd love to he have you share what is your experience with repentance. And if you're here and you're not a believer or you're sort of on the periphery of faith, um, this word repentance is just that idea of when you go wrong and you have to say sorry, um, what is your experience with having to apologize, with, with having to redirect your actions, um, with planning to do something and failing to do it. Um, what has been that experience like for you? Um, outside of that spiritual context particularly. Um, but yeah, we'll go into our groups and, and chat. And I just hope that you guys have a really meaningful time connecting with one another.